Let's go back into that concussion rehab piece. So I've heard you mention in your video about the Buffalo treadmill test, and I know there are certain things that can be done in concussion rehab. Do you want to just talk a little bit about those things? Yes. Yeah, so the Buffalo, Buffalo concussion treadmill test uh, can also be a Buffalo concussion bike test. But basically, that's the test that it's getting more and more research. It's uh, it was originally tested for folks with persistent concussion symptoms because we were too scared to have folks with acute concussion exercise. We thought it would be damaging to their brain. Um, so we tested it in folks with PCS first, found it was really, really helpful, and it actually helped improve their recovery. So then we started testing it acutely, and now we're actually running that test as soon as like five to seven days after the acute injury. And that's actually the one test that uh, I don't see... I still don't see being done enough, like even in concussion clinics, like large hospital systems. But basically it's a really simple test, similar to the symptom limited activity, where we we get your resting heart rate, we get your vitals, we get baseline symptoms. um, And then we throw you on a treadmill and we have you walk at around, it varies, but around 3.2, 3.3 miles per hour. And after three minutes, we just take that incline and we move it up 1% every minute. So at four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, if you can make it 15%, then we start increasing the speed on you. And I've only had a few like really young athletes get to that point. And that's when we're making a clearance decision, but I've never seen anyone acutely after a concussion (laughs) have to increase the speed. But basically what we do is we just take you on that, that incline and we, we say, Hey, I want you to let me know anytime a new symptom appears. So if you didn't have blurry vision looking at the back of the gym, but now the back of the gym looks blurry, or you didn't feel dizzy, or you didn't feel a headache, um, let me know if that shows up, or let me know when that overall condition changed from a four to a six, or a five to a seven. So if symptoms change two points or a new symptom shows up, we pin that heart rate, and we say that's the heart rate where your symptoms flared, we're gonna prescribe exercise below that heart rate. And so the beauty of the Buffalo concussion treadmill test is you don't have to guess, you don't have to do like nasal breathing, you don't have to just add 100 steps and hope that you eventually hit this this target. We can pretty reliably predict, I actually just posted this on Instagram today, we can pretty reliably predict that after a concussion or within post-concussion, your symptoms will flare somewhere between 50 and 70% of your estimated heart rate max. So for most people, somewhere within 50% of the heart rate and 70% of the heart rate max, we're going to see symptoms flare. And then we'll prescribe below that threshold so that we're having you exercise, but below your symptoms, so you can tolerate that exercise. And then we bring you up, bring you up, bring you up, bring you up, bring you up until you can tolerate 80% or more of your, your heart rate max. Can you explain what percent percent of heart rate max means? Because people might know like, oh, I have a resting uh, yeah. heart rate or what is that actually, what is the percent? Yeah, mean? yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the percentage of heart rate max, it's it's an estimate. So there's different equations that we can use to try to calculate how fast could your heart rate possibly beat <laughs> and, and still move blood? Like what's the max like rate that your heart would pump at? Um, and so typically, if you wanted to do this at home, um, the common method, I think it's called the Carvonin method, Carvonian method, um, is you take 220 and subtract your age. So if you're 30 years old, your estimated maximum heart rate is going to be 190 beats per minute. Um, and so theoretically at 30 years old, if we just had you all out sprint on a, on a, you know, like a cycle ergometer, or we had you sprint on a treadmill or a row machine, we probably couldn't get your heart to beat faster than 190 beats per minute. And so if that's the max, we basically say, okay, 50% of that maximum is going to be 190 times 50% or times 0.5. And so half of 190, if we wanted to do that right now, (laughs) can't do the mental math with my dad brain, but um, so 95 beats per minute would be 50% of a 30 year old's heart rate max. And then if we wanted to do 70%, it'd be 133. So somewhere between 95 and 133, we would expect symptoms to flare and we would prescribe exercise below that, that symptom threshold so that we can build your tolerance back up. And ultimately, we want to get you to be able to tolerate 80% or more of your heart rate max for basically somewhere between 15 and 30 minutes. If you can tolerate 80% of your max for 15 to 30 minutes, several days in a row without a change in symptoms, an appreciable change in symptoms, we can pretty safely say that that autonomic, that blood flow component is not contributing to your symptoms. So if you still have symptoms, but you can pass that exercise test, it's probably due to something in your neck. It's probably due to something in your ears or your eyes 
um, or maybe there's a, a trauma, mental, emotional, psychological component that needs to be addressed. But that's kind of the threshold that we're looking at for, for exercise. Um, and that's how we use the treadmill test. That's great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Through your darkest night, hope survives.